There are questions that must be answered, certainly, Councillor Scheel, head of the Federation Security Council, said during his briefing to the press. However, this is not the time for reckless, divisive accusations. We need to come together during this tragedy, not tear ourselves apart. I have complete faith in Director Axlia and trust her implicitly. I cannot disclose many details at this time due to an ongoing investigation by Federation Intelligence, but Director Axlea has cooperated fully with our own inquiry into the matter and has shown exceptional character and leadership. I have every confidence that once the matter has been fully investigated, all of your questions will be answered at that time. John was lounging on the sofa in his office with a bowl of popcorn and an open tin of his grandma's special brownies watching the news. I wonder what Axlea has on that asshole, John chuckled. Counselor Skippy kicked back on the other side, just giggled. Must be something good, she chuckled as she turned to face John. Popcorn me. John tossed a kernel into Skippy's mouth. She munched happily and tossed back a bottle of XL beer, a viscous brew so vile that even humans will not touch it. Counselor! What possible justification could she have for removing the warrants and bounties pertaining to Sheila Donovan and her band of murderous cutthroats? A reporter demanded. None. Absolutely none at all, Counselor Shiel replied. And that is exactly why there is an investigation taking place. She will get to the bottom of this, I assure you. I urge patience and restraint while the director does exactly what she is paid to do, her job. Thank you. The scene shifted to a human reporter sitting behind a holographic backdrop of the destruction of the White Star. By the creators, this is fantastic. Skippy giggled as she reached for another brownie. Classic Federation pellet hump. It never fails to entertain, does it? She nibbled at the brownie. Dude, she purred. We really need to discuss another agricultural export. She waved the remainder of the brownie at him before munching it down. Not a problem, Counselor. I'm sure we can arrange something, John said with a smile. They both turned to watch a Federation admiral try to explain how someone could hide an entire Starliner from them for so long, blow it up right in front of them, and then just fly off right under their noses. Oh, this is fucking great, Skippy giggled. Look at him dance. Creator, I love it when they squirm. Fucking feds. Hey, John laughed. Aren't you a fucking fed? Skippy just giggled and reached for the popcorn. John opened his mouth. She tossed a kernel at him, bouncing it off of his nose. I'll tell you a secret, Skippy giggled. We are members of the Federation, sure, but to be honest, we actually don't like them very much. What? We were happily just doing our thing, and then the Federation just kept growing until we were basically surrounded. It became pretty clear pretty quick that if we wanted to trade and move freely in even our own sector, we needed to become a member too, so we joined. Skippy shrugged. If we were located more conveniently, like say where you guys are, we would have just given them the middle finger when their diplomats came calling. I didn't know that, John said as he tossed a kernel into Skippy's mouth. Yeah, we aren't alone either, Skippy chuckled. There are a few systems like us out there. Systems who joined, but, well, to say they aren't fans is putting it a little mildly. She grabbed the popcorn bowl, shoved her face into it, and started munching away. Hey, I'm eating out of that, John laughed as he retrieved the bowl. Oh, Skippy said, nudging John's arm. It's your girl. There was a snarling and quite unflattering image of Sheila Donovan on the screen. This is the pirate responsible for the loss of the White Star and the death of hundreds of innocent crewmen and security team members plus dozens of passengers, an older gentleman said in front of the image. She is the villain here, not the honest and hard-working people of Axian lines. But what about the allegations of human trafficking being brought forth by the survivors of the White Star incident? That is complete and total nonsense, the man shouted. My company would not tolerate such actions on any of our vessels. Survivors are reporting that the fact that the victims were Republic children was the main reason your ship was destroyed. Fucking what? John snarled and leaned forward, glaring at the screen. These are criminals. Lying is part of their stock and trade. Those poor passengers were lied to, the man said. They will say or do anything to justify their vile actions. What about a member of the Federation press, then? 
What? The human asked, looking quite confused. Oh, Skippy said, grabbing another fistful of popcorn. A report was just released from a reporter who was a passenger on the White Star when it was seized, a Paul K. shouted, crest fully engorged. A Federation citizen. She has footage. She has names. She has proof. Another man stepped forward. We will be taking no further questions at this time, thank you, he said. And then they both beat a hasty retreat as reporters had to be physically restrained from chasing them down. John exhaled deeply and leaned back. You are taking this quite calmly, Skippy said, cocking an eye at him. Knowing you, I would expect you to be screaming for blood. Think about it, John smiled. Those traffickers ran into Sheila and friends. What happened to them afterwards was probably not nice. Knowing Sheila, they will most likely trace back the entire slave pipeline and rip it out by its roots with each person in the chain being flayed alive if they are lucky as they go. As far as Axion goes, the fact that the ship was destroyed as a direct result of criminal activity takes that nice fat insurance policy, wipes its ass with it, and then sticks it right on their forehead. Skippy, they just took a total loss on the fucking White Star. That's why that guy looked like he was bleeding out up there. Popcorn me. Helena's footage with proper citation and link to her website of the liberation and initial walkthrough of Bruce's Emporium started to play on the main screen. We are playing this footage with the permission of investigative journalist Helena Sterling on the condition that nothing be edited or blurred. She demands that it be seen as shot. Viewer discretion is advised. After a few moments, John grimaced and switched off the hollow. Eesh. Skippy muttered. You Terrans sure like your knives, don't you? I'm going to fucking wreck Axion, John snarled. How? The wrath of the Republic shall fall upon them, in this case said wrath being a full diplomatic corps, a legion of lawyers, and last but not least me. Hell, I might even try to entice Patricia out of her den, but I don't think I have enough raw meat. Yeah, how is that all working out? Skippy chuckled. I've heard some shit. Just one big happy family, John smirked. I am delighted. No, honored that someone of Patricia Hughes' stature and long history of service to the Republic has been selected as the deputy ambassador to the Republic. It is truly humbling to be in the presence of someone who has served the Republic since day one. No, since before day one. Oh, fuck, Skippy giggled. That bad? John just winced. Skippy giggled even more loudly. Well, I know what will make things better. Skippy giggled. Noodles, I got the munchies. Sounds like a plan to me, John replied. Ambassador, Toby said through the intercom. I hesitate to interrupt your trade conference with the ex Ali counselor, but Director Axley is here to see you. This shouldn't take too long, John said. We can't stand each other for more than a few minutes at a stretch. Meet you there? I'll just wait for you outside. You guys have a lovely garden. Skippy stood up brushing off stray bits of popcorn off of her robes and fur. Cool. Skippy bounced out of John's office. Moments later, Axlea sauntered in. Nice to see you finally decided to report for work, asshole, the director said as she slowly walked around his office. Great to see you too, bitch, John replied. I already swept for bugs twice. Well, you got all of them, Axlea replied. I actually didn't find any, John laughed. I think she was fucking with me, not planting any, so I would think I missed one. Axlea just chuckled and then glanced over and the popcorn, open brownie tin, and empty bottles of beer. I see negotiations with the XALI were tense. Yeah, it took two bowls of popcorn, a six-pack, and a couple of Grandma's finest, but I think we made a little progress. John laughed. So, Director, please tell me you weren't involved in that bullshit attempt to frame Stephen Marrow. What do you mean, frame? The Director replied. The police have a missing person, motive, and his genetic material all over the fucking place. Exactly, John said as he got up to pour himself a cup of coffee. Brownie? Axley shook her head. Marrow, a smart and very experienced individual, even though he has a team of thugs, personally goes to this son of a bitch's hotel and then leaves his DNA all over the place? Marrow being that sloppy? Marrow? Sloppy? John returned to his desk and takes a seat. Do you actually expect me to believe that? Seriously? John asked as he sipped his coffee. I don't expect you to believe anything, Axler replied with a smile. This is a police matter, not intelligence. Well, they certainly fell for it, 
hook, line, and sinker, John smirked, had one of their inspectors in here ready to haul him off and everything. I don't know what was funnier, John smiled. The inspector actually trying to scare someone who has worked directly under the fucking horde mother herself for over a hundred years, or the ever so brief look on Marrow's face when confronted with the indisputable evidence. Thank you for that, John said with a grin. I really needed a good laugh, Ambassador, Axla calmly replied. I need serious John here for a minute. Okay, John said calmly. Shoot. Patricia Hu is a clear and present danger, not only to the Federation, but to the Republic as well, the director said quietly. You realize that, right? John just looked at her and raised an eyebrow. I know you are in a tough spot, Axla continued. You have to be loyal to the Republic. Hold true to your position as ambassador and wrestle that fucking snake. I don't expect you to confirm or deny anything. I just want you to know that despite our governments and our personal differences, that you have my full support when it comes to this particular issue. I'm serious, John. When it comes to Patricia Who, just say the word and whatever you want or need, I'll make it happen. Anything. God, John thought to himself. If only it were that easy. Hmm. John said after a few seconds. Patricia Hu is a Republic citizen and a high-ranking diplomatic official. There is no way in hell that I would want your support full or otherwise. If there is an issue which I am neither confirming nor denying, it is a Republic issue, an internal matter and a delicate one, and one that I don't need further complicated by some clumsy half-assed meddling from the outside. Got it? Looks like I got through, Axlia thought to herself. He will reach out before he drowns. Okay, Axlia said. Just keep it in the back of your mind. Just letting you know that you have, on this issue and this issue alone, a standing strings-free offer of assistance. I'll keep it in mind, he snarled. It's just like Helen and I talked about. She wants allies and is willing to deal. Interesting. Just to let you know, Axlia said, letting out a long, slow stream of bubbles, I won't let that fucking monster hurt my Federation. Your internal matter? Keep it internal. It leaks outside, and I will deal with it. You mean like the way you dealt with those missing four staffers that I haven't been officially informed about? John asked, pretending to be displeased. Yes, exactly like those four staffers, Axlia calmly replied. They were the actual ones who went to that man's apartment, by the way. Very interesting bioscans, too. Exactly like Sylvia Salvatore's. Who? John smiled. She knows. You should really keep better tabs on who goes in and out of this embassy, John. You really should, Axley said as she smiled, slightly revealing her fangs. If I want a time-stamped list, I know who to call. Actually, you do, Axley replied. If anyone interesting drops by, I'll be sure to let you know. Actually, that would be really convenient. I wonder if I could get that in spreadsheet form. Toby loves spreadsheets, John thought to himself as he scowled at her. Well, I just dropped by to tell you how happy I was to see you back on your feet and let you know that you have a friend in this, Axlia said with a wiggle. I won't keep your girlfriend waiting. Enjoy lunch. Bite me, bitch, John said with a smile. Right back at you, cock muncher, Axlia replied with a chuckle as she walked away. As she did so, a small compartment opened and a single data crystal fell out. John got up and retrieved the crystal, frowned at it, and slipped it into his pocket. He decided to review it after lunch. He was pretty sure it would ruin his appetite, and he really wanted some noodles. Lovely to see you back where you belong, Toby, Director Axla said as she passed by his desk on the way out. Thanks again for the power bars, she said happily patting a hatch on the side of her bot. I was really running low there. Happy to oblige, Director, Toby replied pleasantly as he sipped a cup of tea. Axla just chuckled. I still can't wrap my head around it, she laughed. You, a Terran Marine. Review of the footage concerning a recent incident should clear up any doubt, Director, Toby said, wiggling his eye stalks slightly. That it did, Director Axley chuckled. That it did. You guys take care, and if you need anything... Toby just leveled all four eyes at her. The director of Federation Intelligence will be the first person I call. He said his voice dripping with levels of sarcasm. Few but the Kalesh can achieve. 
as he wiggled his eye stalks just enough to properly flavor the remark. Well, not the first, certainly, Axley chuckled, but keep it in mind. You never know what will happen before the end. I actually will, Toby thought, as he looked at Axlea as if she was a bug. Have a lovely day, director. Nobody can say go and fuck yourself. Quite as well as you can, Toby, Axlea laughed as she left the embassy. As she left, she looked over at Counselor Skippy admiring some flowers and blew a single bubble. Not only do I have to deal with Patricia, I have this carp shit to worry about, she thought to herself. The ex bully one of the most troublesome members of the Federation becoming friendly with the Terrans. Since when was John actually an ambassador? Counselor Skippy waved to her happily. Director Axley responded with a little wave of her own. Axley sat in her grav car as she watched John and Skippy walk out of the embassy and down the street. She smiled as she received a Terran one-finger salute from John as they passed and shook her head. Not only was it a Terran and an XZLI, it was those two in particular. John, the king of the assholes, and Counselor Skippy. Her infamy in the council was second only to the love with which she was held by her constituents. That was a critical mass of trouble if she ever saw one. A real Terran XXLI association wouldn't just stop at popcorn. That she knew for certain. She just shrugged and decided that was one for her successor to worry about. She almost felt bad for them already. That evening, John went out for a stroll and hailed a cab. He was soon in a less than entirely reputable part of town and walked into a nightclub. He stopped by the bar to order a drink. Want a party? A formerly attractive human female, clearly on something, slurred as she slid in next to him. Just meeting a few friends, he said as he nodded towards the back. The woman just shrugged and moved on to her next target. Once he got his drink, he walked to the back of the club and approached a nondescript door. A shaggy four-limbed bouncer lounging nearby just nodded as he opened it and walked inside. He walked down a dark hallway lit only by faux neon decorations and passed a number of closed doors, from some of which issued grunts and moans and opened the doorway at the end. Inside was a much better lit and more tastefully decorated room. Sitting around a table were just over a dozen men, women, and Kalesh. Troops, John said with a grin. Why the fuck did you drag us out here to this shithole? A silver-haired woman growled. It was the only place everybody knew how to get to without using computers. Including you, John replied as everybody laughed. So, the woman said with a chuckle, what the fuck is going on? John just sighed, sat down at the table, and took a drink. Hang on to your hats, boys and girls, he said, and then drained the rest of his glass. You aren't going to believe this shit. Everyone's expression became more and more grave as John continued. So, once again, we are at the tip of the spear. Quite possibly the future of the Republic is going to be decided right fucking here. Fuck, the silver-haired woman quietly replied. So, Colonel, she said after a few moments, what are your orders? For now, Ariana, do nothing. Say nothing, see everything, hear everything, John replied. Business as usual. We have an embassy to run. As far as the vampire and her undead legion are concerned, we need intel, a lot of it, before we move. We are only going to get one shot. About that move, Ariana said as she sipped her cocktail. How exactly are we going to handle those people? I mean, we are bad and all but their skills are legendary, and they have had a long time to hone them. I've made a few arrangements, John smiled. Toby has all the details. I need all of you to pay him a visit, one at a time. When nobody is looking over the next few days, he will equip you all with red tips and take your measurements. Measurements? Ariana asked with a grin. Measurements, John replied with a toothy smile. They can be as kung fu panda as they want, but when it comes time for us to put our foot down, it will be inside two centimeters of armor plate. John smiled as the room was filled with quiet snickering. Remember, we want to look unaware, weak, and stupid. Let them think you don't know what's up. Hopefully, she will be too busy playing poison pill with Director Axley and trying to fuck with my head to see you guys coming. We want to look like just a bunch of dumb jarheads until then. We are just a bunch of dumb jarheads, sir, Glenn. A lean, scarred man shouted as everybody laughed. Okay, as far as communications goes, John said with a smile. Do all of you have your old core handbooks? Most of them shook their heads. No problem, Toby has those too. Are you familiar with the concept of a code book?